So this first one is more of a donut shape. So what I like to do is press, kind of like we did for the pumpkin. So I rotate it with my left hand and I squeeze very gently with the right hand. That is our donut shaped apple go along the bottom and twist right beyond where you see that line forming to make it a little bit more narrow at the bottom. The second one I start out the same way but I do it only a little bit just so you start getting a flattened top and bottom and then I roll at the bottom slightly with my fingers because this is supposed to be a very round apple. So there's not much definition of shoulder on that type of apple. These other ones you'll be making a couple of. And this, on, instead I'm holding it with my left hand and I'm twisting with my right hand. And I put a little bit of pressure on it. The top that you see is the shoulders. So this one is going to be more like our Granny Smith apple. And then we're going to do one with nice tall shoulders. And that one is almost the same. I just do it longer like this. And then I'll show you how to do the top and the bottom, which is going to be the same on all apples. So see how we're getting nice tall shape? Now that we have the shapes of our apples, to create the bottom of all of our apples, I poke a little hole in. I make four strong marks. This is kind of like our pumpkins. And then I do very light marks towards the inside. They don't go all the way around. And that gives us the bottom of our apple. The top one is a little bit different. I poke a hole in and I rotate around to open it up. That's to add our stem later. Place it down and I rotate my thumb upwards so I could create a slightly rounded indented section without being too harsh in the top. And Then I can smooth it out a little bit more. And you do that to all of the shapes. So for the ginger gold, I use a pale mustard yellow color, and I use a richer mustard color. I use kind of a peachy color, a darker salmon, because I might possibly use that, a yellow green. And the ginger gold, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the, the rounder apples. It's between the round and the very tall shoulder. Pick up a little bit of the lightest coral and mix it with some of the paler yellow, and mix it with some of the paler yellow and start adding that towards the top of the apple. So this is going to be our little blush. Then on the opposite side I'll add a little bit of green with the yellow. Back to add a little bit more of the peach with the yellow, the pale yellow. In real life the ginger gold has a lot of pretty um, blush and pale yellow. Sometimes just a tinge of green where it hasn't fully ripened yet. Add just that palest yellow all the way around. And that is all the coloring we need for our ginger gold. So there we go. We're now going to do our jazz apple. I'm going to add rust and then the red colors. And here's another red. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the brightest yellow. And the jazz apple is one of the taller apples. Now on the jazz apple I'm going to add some of the brightest yellow and then I'm going to paint the rest of the body in the paler yellow and the richer, darker, mustard-looking yellow. You'll want to make sure to add some color to the bottom. You want some of it lighter and some of it darker to add a little bit more visual interest. I add a little bit of the rust and a little bit of the darkest of the yellows. I add a little bit of that to the very top first. And I'll bring it partly down the side. Then after adding it to one side, I start painting it on just the curve of the opposite side, adding in a little bit of color. The jazz is a very yellow apple with hints of red. If it wasn't quite bright enough, you could always add a little bit of red, just a little tiny bit, but not letting that red hit any of the yellows just in the center of where you had the rust, just to deepen part of that rusty area. So there is our jazz apple. We're going to do the Granny Smith apple. I'm going to add just a little bit of the darkest green. I like to go for the in-between size, the more natural apple shape. I'm going to paint the top and the lighter of the yellow ochres. And I won't go all the way around. As you've noticed, I like to have some of the color on the body on the opposite side. 
And I would add a little bit of the darker yellow just to part of the top. I'm going to take the lighter yellow green and go all over. So we have a nice green base on our little apple here. I'm going to add a little bit of the darker green and little bits and pieces. We're going to do our Duchess apple now. Duchess apple, we're going to use the color palette that we already have. Add a little bit of the lighter yellow and the more darker yellow ochre across the top. And this is to keep the green from being too bright. This is to give it a golden color instead of a blue-green color. And then I'm also going to add it to the bottom of our Duchess apple. And then I'm going to start brushing up the sides a little bit. Then I'm going to have the paler yellow all over, making sure that I kept that darker color at the very top. I'm going to use the yellow-green color. So I'll use both shades, the medium and the darker green. You want it to be very pale in the center. I'm going to start adding the coral tones to warm up the side. And I'm kind of blotting it on rather than brushing it so much now. I don't want the red to swallow the green or the green to swallow the red. I'm going to take a soft brush that doesn't have paint on it yet, or powder, and then brush up and down trying to smooth away any of the extra dust that's clung on. So I'm doing really thin streaks of red. So I just continue doing that until I have some good red streaks going up the whole side. And you can even bring some down onto the base or some up over the green. Kind of adds to the, to the interesting charm of this kind of strange apple. But isn't that an interesting looking apple? That's called a duchess apple. And our maiden blush is half green, half red. So I add a little bit of aqua to our palette. This is the flat donut shaped one. Grab the aquas and I'm just going to do half of it, this aqua color, and half of it peach. And then from here I might add a little touch of the actual green because it is green and pink. So the opposite side is going to be our corals and pinks. I'm going to brush over on the other side over here. So that's how our little maiden blush looks. So let's start with our Viking apple because it's red. We're going to be adding purple to our color palette here. We're adding lots of purple, medium purple. Is I am going to start with a rich red, as red as you can get it. And you just have to know that when you bake this, it's, it's not going to look red when it comes out. And you can recapture some of the color by glazing it after. And sometimes adding a touch of rust darkens it enough where it appears more red. Take some of this red and I'm going to pull a little bit of purple into it and mix it up. Make it darker and richer. Just try to get it as dark as you can without losing red and having it go too purple on you. The final apple is actually called a black Arkansas apple. I'm grabbing a little bit of the darkest coral, a little bit of red, and I am painting it on one side on the top. The medium purple is going on all the sides that were white and on the bottom. And then I'll add some of the dark, dark purple with just a touch of the red. This apple is more like a purple apple with red undertones, which is why we're leaving that red area mostly red. And here is our black Arkansas apple. So here's a little bit of brown with a little bit of translucent, and I'm just going to mix these two up and roll it out as thin as I can. So I will just cut small little lengths, and I'll put a little bit of translucent liquid Sculpey right there, and then I'll pick up a stem, and I will stick it on in there. And there's our little stem. So here they are, all matte, and I'm going to put glaze on them so you can see what they look like glossy. If you want them to look the way that they do now, that's a little bit more realistic, use a matte glaze. 